Good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for another Wednesday night Bible study. Today is Wednesday, May 8, 18th. Uh, we are uh, about mid-month, being that there um, is the fifth Sunday in this month. And we just appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to be with us on today. We pray that you've had a good day. And as I've oftentimes stated, that you're having a good week so far. And we pray that what we discuss tonight will be a source of strength and take you even further in this week. Amen. So again, thank you all for coming and sharing. Those who are currently accessing uh, the live chat and greeting us, I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And those who do not have access to the live chat uh, or choose to be watching um, Bible study by way of your TV, and therefore is not necessarily accessing, accessing the live chat. We greet you as well in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so excited about um, being able to be with you uh, on another Wednesday night's Bible study. All right. Um, I normally pray to give people, uh, well, we pray anyway to ask God's blessings upon uh, the Bible study, but uh, also in doing that, we normally do that to allow others to join us. But um, I prayed before <laughs> we aired, and so I'm not going to do it just for the sake of doing it. I'm ready to get into Bible study tonight, and so I'm going to give you the title and then I'm going to tell you where we're coming from, and we're going to begin tonight's lesson. Amen. Tonight's lesson is titled, God Prepared Me for This. Mm. God prepared me for this. Amen. And our lesson tonight will be taken from Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. So we're going to look at Acts chapter 10. Um, and in order to put everything in context, we're going to begin at verse one. Um, I'm just going to be led by the spirit. I don't have any notes or anything uh, before me, because as I read the text, things were just revealed uh, that I did not have to write down. Sometimes I have to write things down because I want to say it just like that. Uh, but tonight is different. Uh, I read it and I'm believing the Holy Spirit and I did pray that the Holy Spirit will bring those things back to my remembrance. So we're going to have a discussion of Acts chapter 10 and we're going to begin at verse one. Again, the title of tonight's Bible study is God prepared me for this. Amen. Are you ready for the teaching tonight? Now, um, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible for the sake of this Bible study. Uh, saying that is not new to you. Normally, we will use the New King James Version of the Bible. Uh, we use that most of the time. Uh, sometimes I just want the language of the King James and just maybe define those words that we don't normally use. But sometimes there's so many of them. Um, I'd rather just come from the New King James Version because it saves time as well. Uh, it saves time in explaining what these words mean. So, if you're looking from the King James Version, when I get to a word that's not there or and you see that this a word that I'm using actually defines a word, just indicate that somewhere in your Bible or if you're taking notes otherwise. Uh, otherwise, we invite you, whether by your Bible app or if you have a New King James Version, if you have a phone, you can access the New King James Version. Even if you don't have the Bible app, you can just go to Acts chapter 10. You can type in Acts chapter 10 in the search field and put in um, KJV and it'll come up and we're going to go from there. Amen. All right. So beginning at verse one of chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. I think King James says the Italian band, for instance. OK. Uh, verse two, that's self-explanatory. Um, verse two begins to describe him. He was a devout man, one who feared God with all his house. 
who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. That's basically self-explanatory too. A devout man who feared God with all of his household. Amen. Uh, it's, uh, that's, here's another example of as for me and my house, you know, that type thing. Um, he gave alms, gen alms gen generously to the people. Now notice it's spelled A-L-M-S. -A uh, he gave alms. The word alms mean pity. So he gave to people things. Uh, alms could include money. You know, most of the time it is. Um, you might remember there were some beggars who asked, who begged for ALMS, alms from the people, you know. So he gave alms generously uh, to people in general, and he prayed to God always. So this is something about him. So remember those things. Um, verse three, about the ninth hour of the day and the ninth hour uh, would be three o'clock in the afternoon, because as far as the Jewish day is concerned, it starts, uh, you know, at sunrise, sunrise, you know, the Jewish day begins at six o'clock. Um, and so counting from six to three, that's the ninth hour. So three, around three o'clock in the afternoon, um, he saw clearly, Cornelius saw clearly in a vision, remember the word vision because it's going to come up again. Clearly, in a vision, an angel of God. Okay, and we know that in, uh, when the Bible talks about an angel of God, it's talking about a messenger from God uh, coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. Now, in this case, they don't name the angel. Normally, the angel that comes with a message would be Gabriel, like he came to uh, Mary. And then also Elizabeth um, or Zechariah. That's what I mean. To Mary and also to Zacharias. Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. But at any rate, it doesn't give a name here. But the point is, it was an angel of God. Angel, um, messenger from God is another way that we could say it. Are we together? Uh, and this angel of God coming in, saying to him, Cornelius. I, I just love that. Uh, God will, when he has a message for you, he sends his messenger to speak to you. He'll call you by name. He'll call you by name. So he said unto him, Cornelius, verse four. And even if I don't call out the verse, just know that, that we're flowing. And when he observed him, he was afraid. Now, that's nothing new. If you notice, in most cases where angels appeared, early I made mention of Mary. I made mention of Zacharias and so on and so forth. Uh, Normally, when an angel appears, the first response is that of fear. Uh, one is actually afraid. Number one, because, you know, when they see them, angels are are mass, can be mass beings. Now, I do understand that they can come in the form of human beings. We learned that in the days of Abraham and Lot. And that is why scripture teaches that we need to be careful um, how we treat strangers because we could be entertaining angels unawares. But at any rate, um, he he was afraid, the Bible says, and said, what is it, Lord? Now, what I love about that, he says, what is it, Lord? That's a small L on Lord. But it shows submission. It shows that Cornelius obviously understood that this being that he sees in a vision you understand, or comes to him in a vision, um, you know, is somebody that's above him, he is superior to him. So he says, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Did you catch that? Because remember verse two, said he was a devout man, one who feared God with all of his household. He gave alms generously to the people and he prayed to God always. So this messenger from God let him know, hey, your alms giving have come up for memorial before God. God has paid attention to that. You know, he's made note of that. And it's a memorial unto you, you know, before God. I just love that. You know, that shows us right there. What we do is not in vain. God pays attention to that. 
God pays attention to what you do. It's not in vain. Amen. Uh, God notices that, and it means something to God. Did you catch that? And sometimes we feel like what we do is not enough because people have a way of making you feel like what you do is not enough. But as long as, long as it's enough for God, God help us. That's all that matters. As long as God is pleased with what we do, then that's all that matters. At any rate, the angel continues, verse five. He says, now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. In another teaching, I'll tell you that surname, another name for surname is nickname or a common name that, uh, that is used by a family, uh, a family name, if you will. Um, so send to Joppa, send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And this is what I love about him. God can be specific. You know, God is specific. Watch this. Send men to Joppa. He specifically called out that place. And send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He specifically calls Peter's name. And um, he even tells him where he's staying. Watch, watch this. Watch this. He says he's lodging. Uh, he is lodging with Simon, a tanner. And a tanner is one who works, um, you know, with metals and things of that nature. Um, and so, you know, with that craft, he's he's lodging with Simon, a tanner. So tanner was not a part of his name. Some people say, you know, King James would say something like Simon the tanner. Uh, but this one who has this particular craft, watch this, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what he must do. When I mention metal, I'm hoping I'm not wrong on that, but I can be corrected. I do recall that. If I'm if I need to correct that, then of course I will. Okay, but at any rate, uh, he's lodging with Simon a tanner, a tanner whose house is by the sea. He would tell you what you must do. I love that. If you can find Simon, who's the tanner, then he will tell you what he must do. I mean, what you must do. So you got two Simons. I want you to go look for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And he happens to be staying with Simon, a guy named Simon, who's a tanner. Watch this. Whose house is by the sea. God is specific. And what we do when he releases us to go certain places, he wants to look for those things because think about it. They're, they're, they're landmarks, they're road signs, they're indications, if you will. It's, it's proof that you are in the right place. So what you do, you start going looking for those things. You say, okay, I'm in Joppa. And now uh, he might even have to uh, inquire about where Simon, Simon the Tanner is because Simon Peter is staying with him. So once he get to him, yeah, okay, that's right. He's over there. He's by the sea. This is, I'm in the right place. Okay, watch this right here. He's going to tell you what you must do. You got it? So God prepared. God prepared Cornelius, um, you know, in telling him what he needed to do. And we see preparation already in terms of when he says he would tell you what to do. Watch this. Verse 7. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, see, that's another thing. The angel will not necessarily remain with you throughout the process all the time. Once the angel delivers the message, then he's gone. The angel is gone. The messenger is gone. I've done my part. I've delivered the mail. This is the message. Now you, you take it from here. So verse seven, and when the angel, angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among uh, those who waited on him continually. You got it? So two of his servants, he called um, two of his household servants and a devout soldier. So he got two of his servants and a soldier. Are we together? Uh, this is what Cornelius did. And when he explained verse eight, all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. So God spoke to him through an angel in a vision. You got it? Amen. Gave him instruction. And when it was over, Cornelius acted upon that. Okay. Meanwhile, and I said it like that on purpose, 
Because God does more than one thing at a time. See, God will be doing something on one end, but then uh, or preparing some things on one end, but then he'll he'll prepare some things on the other end. See what I mean? Verse nine, the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, they who? The day that's in verse eight, uh, uh, or verse uh, nine, the, the soldier uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. As they went on their journey, drew near the city, Peter went up um, on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So it was about the ninth hour. It was the ninth hour, the Bible says, that Cornelius uh, saw clearly in a vision an angel of God about the ninth hour. You got what I'm saying? Okay, watch this. So Peter, in verse eight, went up to the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So if the ninth hour was 3 p.m., the sixth hour would be 12 noon, 12 noon. He went on. He went on the housetop to pray 12 noon. Normally, that's when the sun is, you know, pretty much at its peak, at least from our perspective in Palestine. Now, there were times when um, in Palestine that the sun was beaming as early as like 10 in the morning. Uh, but at any rate, um, he was praying. He went to the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Look at verse 10. Then he became hungry. All right, he got hungry and, and, and he wanted to eat. He was praying. He got hungry and he wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. While the meal was, was being prepared is the way I'm interpreting that. He, Peter fell into a trance, but it was all the plan of God. He fell into a trance, verse 11, and he saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him, meaning coming down to him and let down to the earth. Are we together? He saw like this giant sheet, if you will, an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners. Just picture that descending to him and down to the earth from heaven to earth. He saw this. I normally say it this way. If I reference that scripture right there, that particular passage, it was like what's happening next. It was it was like the canvas uh, or like a movie screen. And I'm going to tell you why I said it. Now, there were no projectors per se. I'm going to tell you why I said that. Uh, look at verse 12. So by him being in the trance, what he saw was like in a vision. He was in a trance like state, but he saw something. So. It's like he's in a vision, having a vision as well. Watch this. Uh, verse 12. In it, talking about the, the sheep, the four corners and all that. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth. Wild beasts. I mean, four-footed animals of the earth. Wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. Are we together? All right. Birds of the air. King James is going to say files of the air, just for, for instance. Okay, watch this. He saw that on that sheet. He could have seen that without the sheet. And that's why I said it's almost like a giant movie screen. Uh, and a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So God showed him something, but then he heard something. And so a voice came to him and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, verse 14, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And what he was saying, because some people probably said, well, wait a minute, what are you talking to the Lord? And notice he said, not so, Lord, that Lord is capital. Remember when, when Cornelius saw the angel in his vision? And he said, what is it, Lord, that was a small L. But here Peter says, not so, Lord. Because obviously he recognized the voice as being the voice of the Lord. Watch this. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. unclean. You got to remember, Peter was a Jew. And Jew, uh, the Jews had what they call, you know, uh, a kosher diet. It did not consist of, of, you know, meat and or particularly unclean type uh, animals. But what we're going to show you is this really was not about food per se. God can use some things and imagery, if you will, to get other points across. So we got to 
to understand that when God speaks to us, sometimes he uses symbolism, but we'll get it if it's from God and if God intends for us to get it. Watch this. So after Peter said, no, I'm not, I've never eaten anything common or unclean because there were some animals that were considered ritualistically unclean. You understand me? And to eat those things would cause those who ate them to be unclean and even to be around people who ate those kinds of things. Uh, you know, those who ate with them st or could stand the chance of, of being defiled. And so they avoided those things and people who ate those things at all costs. Are we together? Okay. Um, verse 15, the Lord checked him. The voice spake to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Are we together? In other words, don't call anything that God makes common. Verse 16, this was done three times now. It was done three times. And if it was done three times, what that means is the voice came to him and said, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, no, Lord. This said it happened three times. All right? And the object was taken up into heaven again. You got it? So there's a message in what Peter saw while in the trance. There's a message. God used an angel, you understand me, to bring a message to Cornelius in a vision. God used uh, the sheet, vision of the sheet and the animals that passed by and use a voice to speak to him in that, that Peter experienced while in the trance. Once it's over, it, it, it went away. The Bible said it was taken up to heaven again. Just like it came, it returned. Verse 17. Now, while Peter wondered within himself um, what this vision which he had seen meant, don't you do the same thing? Okay, what does this mean? So obviously he did not get the meaning at that particular point, but he was pondering within himself. He wanted to know what does this mean? We should want to know. Because what we need, need to know is, okay, if God is trying to tell me something, if I'm going to be obedient to what, is, what he's telling me to do, I need to know exactly what it is. So at any rate, um, Peter wondered, and while he was wondering what it meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius's house, come on, uh, had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. God, God is a God of timing. You understand that? Because Cornelius had his situation one day, and then the Bible said, and the next day, this happens to Peter. God is a God of timing. Right after this vision, sheet of this, you know, all these animals, uh, the sheet, vision of the great sheet, if you will, of that that took place with the great sheet. Right after that, it was taken up to heaven. And while he was thinking about what the vision meant, Watch this, y'all. While he was pondering, what in the world does this mean? The men that Cornelius sent, you understand that, to Joppa, arrives. They're inquiring about him. Watch this, 18. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. Does Simon stay here? <laughs> you got it? Based on instructions that they received, 19, while Peter thought about the vision, see here again, he's still thinking about the vision, but they had inquired because you remember, they said, Peter, is, Simon Peter is staying at Simon the Tanner's house. You see, so here they are inquiring whether Peter is there. So verse 19 says, while Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, <laughs> Lord, help us. And that spirit is capitalized. So it wasn't Peter's human spirit. You understand me? It was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said to him, behold, three men are seeking you. I love that. God, God does more than one thing at a time. While he's trying to figure out the vision and while he's being inquired about, 
You understand me? The spirit lets them know, okay, three men are looking for you. Watch this, verse 20. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Wait just a minute. <laughs> for I have sent them. The, the spirit says, for I have sent them. Okay, look at 21 now. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius. Who sent them? Did Cornelius send them or did the spirit send them? According to Luke, because Luke is the author of the book of Acts, remember, as well as the book of Luke that bears his name. According to Luke, the Holy Spirit said, go with them, doubting nothing, I've sent them. And then we read in the next verse, about these men, you know, the men that Cornelius sent. Who sent them? Ultimately, the Holy Spirit sent them. You, you see what I'm saying? Because it was it was all planned by God. The Spirit sent him, but only used Cornelius in the earth realm to literally send them. So at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit did send them. I need for you to understand that because some people think that this is just human, you know, that what happens is just on a human level. You understand me? But if God tells you to do something, tells you to send somebody and you send them, yes, you sent them, but you sent them in obedience to what the spirit has said to you to do. But at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit sent them. Lord have mercy. He took the guesswork out of the way. Watch this. Look at 21 again. It's kind of funny. I'm going to tell you why. Then Peter went down to the men who had uh, been sent to him from Cornelius after he got the instruction from the Lord, after the Holy Spirit let him know it's okay to go with him. These men are seeking you. It's okay for you to go with them. I sent them. Peter comes down and says, yes, I am he whom you see. For what reason have you come? Now, you probably said, I thought it was going to be funny. Well, it is funny to me, the first part. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the one you're looking for. It's like when somebody goes to your house, I'm going to make it modern day. It's not when somebody go to your house. You may answer the door. I'm just giving this example. You might answer the door and somebody might say, uh, I'm looking for so and so and so and so, or does so and so and so live here? You'll say, uh, who's looking for? No, who wants to know? <laughs> your, your thing is until you feel safe enough to admit that you are the person, because you don't know what people are going to do you good or, you know, do good to you or evil to you. So he was like, once he got clearance, there it is. Once he got clearance from the Holy Ghost, uh, I felt that in my spirit. And I, I feel that somebody else feels that in your spirit too. Once Peter got clearance from the Holy Ghost, from the Holy Spirit, if you don't prefer to say ghost, from the Holy Spirit, he was like, yes, I am he. <laughs> All right. He says, for what reason have you come? Okay, I'm the one. Why have you come? Somebody probably said, well, Peter should have known. Uh -uh. Listen, Peter wasn't present when Cornelius had the vision. Peter was not present. Cornelius had the vision. Cornelius, after the messenger, the angel of the Lord left, he executed things, the instruction that was given him in the vision. And then it so happened that on the next day, Peter isn't. So you got two different ends of the spectrum, but God is working things at, at both ends. He prepared Cornelius and now he's preparing. Uh, we're going to see where he prepared Peter. He prepared Peter. You got it. So he didn't know at this point. He's why, why have you sent for me? You know, why have you come? Now, why have you sent for me? But why have you come? Tell me the reason that you came. Twenty two. They said Cornelius, the centurion, a just man who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to to his house and to hear and he, watch this and to hear words from you. Cornelius sent us to come get you so that you can speak words to his house. Oh, man. You know, it's almost like Peter has invited you to preach it. I mean, Cornelius has invited you to preach at his house. You know. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? Look at 23. Then he invited them in and lodged them. You got it? 
Then he invited them in and lodged them. Okay? So he trusts them. Because remember, the Holy Spirit gave him clearance. On the next day, Peter went away with them. So by him receiving them and lodging them, you know, based on the, you know, the time of day, it could have played a part. I don't know. They could have talked more extensively about it. We don't know. Scripture, scripture doesn't say, but we do know that Peter had fell in the trance uh, and so on and so forth about the sixth hour, which was 12 noon. So we won't get into why they stay because scripture doesn't say. And to me, that's really not important. OK, so on the next day, verse 23 again, Peter went away with them and some of the and watch this. And some brethren from Joppa accompanied him, some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Now, now it only stands the reason that these brethren that accompanied him must be Jews because it's like, OK, I'm getting ready to go with these Gentiles. I'm take some Jews with me okay and plus you know when they travel people travel with uh, more than one person anyway i mean the person didn't go alone is my point look at verse 24 the following day and and the following day they entered caesarea so we see now you know what amount of time it took for them to get to where they were going now cornelius was waiting for him and had called together his relatives and close friends stop <laughs> Cornelius was waiting for him and had caught and had um called together his relatives and close friends watch this Peter uh, uh Cornelius rather invited his relatives and close friends it's like he invited them watch this to the service you got it so here he is inviting people. So here again, God prepared Peter for this. Listen, God prepared Cornelius for this. God prepared Peter for this. You got it? And he's also preparing the people for this. Okay. Let's read on. 25. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Yes, you read right. And worshipped him. 26. I love Peter's response. Some people around here wouldn't do this. But Peter lifted him up saying, stand up. I myself am also a man. Kind of reminds you what happened with John in the book of Revelation. Um, as he began to bow down and worship, one of those that he was talking to says, no, we're brethren. Now, I'm telling you, I don't know who exactly that was. Scripture doesn't really say, but he just said, worship not. Don't worship me. Worship God. He said, listen, we're brethren. You know as well as I do, there's some people, everybody knows somebody who would have loved that. Because people just like for people to, to bow to them. People just like to feel important. And, and they want people to make them feel important. Lord have mercy. Anyway, verse 27. And, and I guess I guess Cornelius' thing was, wait a minute. This is Peter. This is the one that was in the vision. But you, you can't worship the messenger. Come on here. You got to worship the one that sends the messenger. And so you need to do like Peter now. People start trying to worship you. You need to let them know you a man or a woman just like, you know, them. They have, you got blood running your veins too. So no, don't do that. So I commend Peter for that. Verse 27, and as he talked with them, he went in and found many who had come together. We already knew uh, that by according to verse 24, that Cornelius had uh, called a lot of people. I'm thinking, and and, and you know, what I think doesn't amount to hill of beans outside of spiritual insight of the word or revelation of the word. See if you can see what I'm talking about. They said Cornelius sent for you. I'm thinking that Peter just thought he was just going to talk to Cornelius. He did say, you know, that you would come and, and speak some words. But when Peter got there, he saw, uh, he found many who had come together. Cornelius was in great expectation. Amen. And here is what we would call the waiting congregation. Verse 28. Then he said to them, 
you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one another, I mean, go to one of another nation. He's revealing his custom. You know, you know, that's a no, no. <laughs> as far as custom is concerned, look at the rest of this, y'all. But God, see, I know it says, but God has shown. I'm just saying, but God, because it's going to take a lot of but God situations to get people out of their ways. And I'm going to tell you, custom, tradition, this, that, and the other cannot stand against the spirit and the power of God. I need for you to understand that. And so he says, you know, you know, it's unlawful. You, you know, this is not new. It's unlawful for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one another, go to one of another nation. We're not supposed to keep company with it. We're not even supposed to go to another of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Stop. Do you remember Peter was in the trance? The sheet that was bound at four corners ascended, meaning it came down to him and even to the earth. He says in it were all types of animals, four-footed, Bees, creeping things, and fowls or birds of the air. Is that right? I don't remember anything being, I didn't I don't remember him saying that a man flashed oh through there. Do you see where I'm coming from? Because it was of those things, and Peter's it, the, it happened three times, the dialogue, because you remember Peter says, No, Lord, not so, Lord. <laughs> As I stated Sunday, that a friend of ours said. Absolutely not. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. You remember? And then the voice said to him, don't call anything that God has made common or unclean. Remember that? Those were animals on that sheet. I just read it a while ago. But Peter comes in to a Gentile home, him being a Jew. He knew the customs and he knew they knew the customs and says, you know is how long it is for a Jewish man to keep company with uh, or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Peter got the message. And, and as we say in this day, especially some of the young people, uh, younger people, uh -huh, he understood the assignment. See, he got the message. See, earlier, remember, before he met the men that were coming from Cornelius's house to meet him, he was pondering, wondering what the vision meant. He had a vision. The Bible uses the word vision. So God deals with Cornelius in a vision. He deals with Peter in a vision. Peter's trying to understand what does the vision mean? Because obviously Peter's vision was not as precise and clear up front as Cornelius as well, because he told him specifically, go to Joppa, Go to Tan Simon's house, look for P Simon Peter. He's standing at Simon the Tanner's house by the seashore. Sure. That's specific. Peter just saw some animals. Got it three times. The Bible said now they had this situation. We're like, not so, Lord, or absolutely not. You see what I'm saying? But somehow, between the time he met those people, those men, that was sent. It says that I don't, he could have got it during the course of the night because remember, the Bible says that Peter took those men in and he lies them. And then the next day they left. That's what the Bible says. Somehow or another, at some point, catch this, y'all. At some point, while Peter was obedient to the Holy Spirit to go with the men, because although they stayed, they stayed that night. And then lead to the next day. The Holy Spirit said, three men are looking for you. Go with them because I've sent them. You know, don't doubt anything. At some point between that time and the time he opened his mouth, Peter got a revelation. Peter understood that really the vision that he saw really didn't have to do with animals. God just used something that he was familiar with. Watch this to expose Peter's prejudice. Amen, somebody. So Peter said, I know it ain't lawful for us to be coming up in here, you know, 
uh, uh, for a Jewish man to keep company with or even go to one of another nation. I know that. That's what the custom is. But God, come on, God has shown me. Let me tell you something. If somebody's going to see something different, God is going to have to show it to them. You, you understand me? God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Because you got to remember the Gentiles were called dogs and were considered unclean. At, you know, to the Jewish community. You understand that? And so therefore, to be around them, to eat with them, you know, they stood the risk, Jewish people did, of, of being defiled, even if they touch something unclean or touch a person that does something unclean. Come on here. But God showed them. God's going to have to open your heart. Takes them back to Sunday's message about Lydia. You understand me? Uh, God opened her heart. She heard and God opened her heart. Talking about Lydia. Okay, verse 29. Therefore, I came without objection. Now, he didn't understand at first, but there was nothing in scripture that said Peter was reluctant to go. Once he was told what the situation was, you know, he was willing to go. Once he got clearance from the Holy Spirit, he was ready to go. He said, so I came without objection as soon as I uh, was sent for he said, I asked them, for what reason have you sent for me? Look here. So Cornelius said four days ago, I was fastened to this hour. If we it was in this day, we would say, OK, what happened was. So now Peter is telling the story. I mean, Cornelius is telling the story. When, when Peter asked the men what they were there for, why did they want to see him? They said, well, we're here because Cornelius sent us. Now that he's in Cornelius's house talking to the man that sent the men, he's like, OK, just for clarity, what you want me to do? See, that's another thing. God can send you places. And when he send you, you know, places, you want to make sure that you do his will his way. And you can't do it if you don't know what it is. It's like, let me be clear of what my assignment is. Are we together? That's another thing I need for you to see. God would do things in stages. He, he might not reveal it all at one time. And we want, to, we want to see the whole thing played out. Now, God declares the end from the beginning. He's already seen the thing play out. He wants us to be obedient in the little things. Come on here. Because these steps, these stages will eventually point to, to a bigger picture. Are we together? So he did it in stages. Cornelius, he prepared him. Peter, he prepared him. Come on, you see how he prepared him? He prepared Peter to minister to the Gentiles because except God showed him, he wouldn't even have done it. God prepared him for the people. Lord have mercy. And God prepared the people for him. Mm, 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 mm. But anyway, so Peter said, what happened was, <laughs> verse 30, uh, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour meaning it was four days ago to this to the hour. <laughs> At the ninth hour, I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And I and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore the job of the call Simon here, whose name is Peter. He's lodging in the house of Simon a tanner. And you know, Peter could attest to all of this by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. Oh, man. Cornelius is just telling him what happened. I'm saying Peter so much. I might have called Peter at a time. I shouldn't have called Peter's name. But but uh, you know my heart, and then I'm going to make sure I, I stay focused. Cornelius is like, this is what he told me. This, this is what had happened. He said, you're going to speak to us. Can you almost imagine Peter like, not not Peter, but us? Oh, he did say, I'm going to speak to you. And can't you imagine us like, okay, Lord, um, he said, you said I was going to speak to them. Uh, can you help a brother? I? <laughs> See, that, that's what we would do. But I'm telling you, he's already prepared you for it. Even 
when he causes you to speak, so to speak, on the spot, somehow he has prepared you. And I'm going to tell you right now, God, listen, Peter preached the gospel, but, but God helped him. I mean, he knew the basics of it, but God helped him now. He helped Peter when, when Peter was in that trance and he showed that. So, so right after that, uh, he said, he says, verse 33, Cornelius is still talking. He says, so I sent to you immediately based on what I heard God say. And you have done well to come. Thank you for coming. I appreciate that because you didn't have to. I mean, he did, but you know what I mean. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Good God Almighty, somebody. Look at 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, wait just a minute. I got to see it up in there. What? He just got through saying, God said you were going to speak to us. So Cornelius said, so we ready. Here, here we go. Look, Cornelius had uninvited his relatives. Come on. And close friend to this me. After he said that, Peter opened his mouth. Lord, help us. Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth. I perceive that God shows no partiality. That's what I got from the vision. Come on here. But in every nation who fears him and works righteousness, uh, in every nation, whoever fears him. Did you see that word whoever? Whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Don't mean you can save yourself or just do good works. So here's the thing. Cornelius was a devout man. He had a good reputation amongst the Jews. He prayed. He was trying to do right and do the best he could by what he had. But he won't say, come on. There's some people like that. Nice. They give alms. And it will mean something. But I'm saying he was a devout man. His heart seemingly was toward God, although he did not know all that he needed to know. So here's Peter preaching the gospel. I perceive that God shows no partiality. That the King James says is no respect to a person. It doesn't mean that he does not respect people or have respect for people like he respects us. No, it means he doesn't show partiality. God is not partial. Come on, verse 35. But in every nation, whoever fears him, Whoever, you need to catch that. Whoever, because a part of that whoever now are the Gentiles. <laughs> you see how God set that thing up? God prepared them. God prepared. Nothing wasted. Whatever God has allowed you to do or accomplish, it's not wasted. That's for somebody. But in every nation, I'm trying to get past verse 35, but I'm telling you, every time I read, but in every nation, whoever, something happens. And every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted uh, by him. I'm going to read on. The word which God sent to the children of Israel. I'm going to make my point in just a minute. Preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. You see what I'm saying? Jesus was anointed for what he did because he talks about uh, uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. See, you see what I'm saying? By the spirit and the power of God, healing all that were pressed by the devil for God was with him. He was able to do that because God was with him. Peter was prepared for this and he's preaching that Jesus was anointed to do what he did. Look here. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on the tree, which means hanging on the cross. God himself raised up, raised him up on the third day, showed him open, not to all the people, but the witnesses chosen before by God. Uh-huh. He didn't appear to Pilate and, 
and 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 the high priest Annas and Caiaphas, uh huh, those who tried him, but to witnesses chosen before by God, ahead of time by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose again from the dead. I, I need to go back to something when he says. Uh, Peter started preaching. He, he said the word which he sent to the children of Israel, verse 36. What that shows me is Peter is not preaching one gospel to the Jews and another gospel to the Gentiles. They ain't but one gospel. Paul says, and if anybody come with another gospel, you know, see, which really is not another, Paul says. There's one gospel. So Peter in verse 36, and some of the verses following, is letting them know, okay, this is the same gospel, y'all. Ah, this is the chain, same gospel. God just tailored it for y'all today, but it's all a part of his plan. God had, you know, allowed me to go in a trance so he can show me some things and prepare me to meet with y'all. Watch this. But then in verse 41, when he says, uh, he, you know, not he didn't appear to all people, didn't show himself. Uh, to all people, but the witness is chosen before by God. Watch this. Even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. That's Peter's way of saying we are witnesses to the fact that he's real. <laughs> he ate. We saw him eat. Come on. We saw him drink. Jesus Christ, the one that rose from the dead, he is Lord. He is alive. He's a real individual. And after he rose from the dead, we sat down, we ate and drank with him. We saw him after the resurrection and we are witnesses that he is alive. Good God Almighty. Boy, that's the gospel, man. I'm telling you. And it's right, right by itself. That's what saves people. Look here. And he commanded us to preach to the people. Peter is still preaching. And to testify, that is, he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Verse 43, to him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive for remission of sins. He's he's even letting them know that in addition to this being the same gospel, in addition to Christ being the Messiah, in addition to knowing that he is real because we saw him eat and drink with the this is the same Messiah. This the person I'm preaching about is the same one that the prophets preached about. Could God Almighty somebody? Are you are we together? And, and here it is again that whoever to him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. Whoever, whoever, whoever. See, I'm telling you, I feel a John 10 and 16 coming on. John 10 and 16, Jesus said, Listen, I, I have uh sheep. Other sheep that are not of this foe, them I must bring in. Uh-huh. And, and, and they will hear my voice and they will be one flock and there will be one flock and one shepherd. I think I'm going to say that again. John 10 and 16 says, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Man, this is the mystery that was hid from the ages. Jew and Gentile in one body. I'm going to tell you this is significant, and I'm going to tell you why. See, the Jews had this thing where if, if you're really going to serve the Lord like you, you need to become a Jew. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You need to be circumcised. Uh, you need to wear Jewish garments, and you need to attend all these festivals. But see, Paul even preached one time to let them know, OK, listen, a, a, a Jew is, is not a Jew outwardly. Come on up in here. A Jew is a Jew inwardly. Oh, God, help us. Paul lets them know, look, circumcision, you're talking about circumcision. It's not of the flesh. You need to be circumcised. Uh, you know, you need your heart circumcised. It's the circumcision of the heart that matters. Lord have mercy. So in, in you know, uh, Judy, in Judaism, there were those who taught a, 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 a Jesus plus gospel. Like, you know, you got to have Christ, but you got to be circumcised. That was a that was a sign that God made with them 
You understand? Uh, at that particular time, it was proof that they were Jew. It was a sign of the covenant that God had made for them. Are we together? But Paul lets us know now, okay, wait just a minute. And sometimes Paul would do some things, you know, uh, as not to hinder the word from going forth. Had his head shaved, see what I'm saying? Had others circumcised and things of that nature that he might win some. He says, I am become all things to all men that I might win some. We're going to read on, almost through, by the way, back in Acts chapter 10. Uh, because we're, we're going to the end of that chapter, and that's verse 48, and that's just a few verses down. Okay, so verse 44. So Peter understood the assignment. And when he said that God, so here we are waiting for a word from the Lord. And when Cornelius said that, he opened his mouth, God spoke for him. But God had prepared him. I came to tell somebody, God prepared you for this. And the reason I'm tired that God prepared me for this, I want you to take it personally. I want you, I need for you to be able to accept God prepared you for this. This what? Your assignment. What's my assignment? Go back to God and ask him, what's your assignment? And I tell you what, if you are led by the spirit, you will walk out your assignment. Are you understanding me? Okay, look here. Let's get those last uh, four verses. While Peter was still speaking these words, did anybody see what just happened? While Peter was still speaking these words, not afterwards. The Bible does not say, and as he after he came to an end of these sayings, this happened. I still would have been happy, but this shows me something. And what happened here can happen today in our day and time. Y'all ready? While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. What? The Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word while Peter was still speaking the words. Let me tell you something. If you come prepared, y'all ain't studying me. That's a preacher thing. Cornelius, God prepared Cornelius to receive Peter. God prepared Peter to preach to the Gentiles. God prepare Cornelius to receive Peter as well and Peter to receive Cornelius. See what I'm saying? All this preparation, God prepared them for that. If we come prepared, come on up in here. Stuff can happen. While he was talking, y'all, while Peter was preaching the word, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word while he was preaching. You know what that shows me? At some point, while Peter was preaching the word, they came to a place where they believed that Jesus Christ, it it what is in fact the Son of God, Lord have mercy, and they accepted that in their hearts to the point where they were ready to be uh, uh, filled with the Spirit of God. Listen to this: Spirit fell on them. Look at forty-five, and those of the circumcision, mean the Jewish people. Who who be, who uh, believed were astonished. What Jews? Well, I'm thinking that Cornelius, since he invited relatives and friends, that, that his house was full of Gentiles. So the Jews, the brethren that Peter invited to come with him to the meeting, <laughs> they were astonished. Peter needed to bring them so that they could witness. Watch this here, y'all. They were astonished. As many as came with Peter, well, that, that confirms that. They were astonished. As many as came with Peter. Why? Why were they astonished, y'all? Why were they amazed? Because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. I'm going to break it down. They were astonished because that thing was, you know, God poured out his spirit on them just like he did us. So now he dealt with their prejudice, the prejudice of the people that came with Peter. He already dealt with people, Peter. Now he's dealing with those who came with Peter and letting them know, hey, God is no respected person. He doesn't show partiality. I'm going to pour my spirit out upon all flesh. Peter preached it on the day of Pentecost. I'm pointing like it was right up there. He, he preached on the day of Pentecost. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel when the spirit poured on them, poured out on them at first. 
In Acts chapter 2, this is that, he said in Acts chapter 2. And he quoted Joel. And at the end of that, it was like, I, I, I pour out my spirit. On, on all flesh, I will pour out my spirit. It's, come on. So they were astonished that God poured out the Holy Spirit on them to see. And that way, you don't have to feel like you're superior to somebody else. Come on. God said, I want my spirit on, on all flesh. The Gentiles include. Look here. Because it's all pouring into his plan. Jew and Gentile into one body. God help me. 46. Just got a few more verses. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And I know that's not the end of verse 46. And, but I'm going in, I'm going to put a period there and then do 46 and go into 47, the end of 46 and go into 47. How they know they got it? Because they spake with other tongues. Now, what I need for you to know is that there was no other sign that, that Peter and the other Jews could get that would convince them that the spirit poured out on them. They had to have the sign of speaking with other tongues. And some people think that speaking with other tongues is the only evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And it is not the only evidence. It is an immediate evidence. But you got to remember in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Come on. There are other markings or evidences of being filled with the Spirit. But this was the only one that they had to have to convince them they got it just like we did at the first. Let's finish verse 46 and go into 47. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just like we have? They got it just like we got it. Is there any problem with these folk being baptized? Did anybody forbid water for these to be baptized? Anybody got a problem? with them being baptized since they received the Holy Ghost like we did. That's why I told you one time before that there's not a formula. You know, when I was talking about the uh, the eunuch, no, no, no. When I was talking about Peter preaching in Acts chapter 2 one particular time, and he said, what, what must we do? What shall we do? When Peter preached, he says, uh, repent and be baptized that you might see the, receive the gift of the Holy, Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? That's Acts 2 and 38. You see what I'm talking about? He says, repent. You see what I'm saying? And be baptized. And you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, so in Acts 2 and 38, they were, he, he said, I say repent, but he said, believe and be baptized. Got it? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In what Peter said then, baptism was first. I just read here where they received the Holy Spirit while Peter was preaching. See, that, that's another thing. I don't care what you heard. I'm telling you what's in the word. That's why you can't lock this thing into a formula. Some people may receive the Holy Spirit after being baptized. But here, they received the Holy Spirit before they were baptized. Come on here. Why? Because once they believed, they were candidates for, you know, for the spirit to indwell uh, in them. Come on here. So we see an example. While the word was going forth, people believed and the spirit fell upon them and they knew they got it like they got it because they spake with other tongues while they were preaching. Would that not be beautiful? That while the word is going for people, because sometimes nothing's wrong with the word. First of all, nothing's wrong with the word anytime. Sometimes people have a problem with how the word is delivered. You see what I'm saying? But if you come prepared, everybody was prepared. Cornelius was prepared. Peter was prepared. Come on, the people were prepared. They were waiting for the words. God set that thing up. And they were all filled. Verse 48, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. <laughs> I love that. Like Lydia, when Lydia got converted, 
they constrained Paul and them, meaning they persuaded them, stay away. That's that's how it is. You, know, you all are responsible for our lives being changed. Won't you stay a while? Saints, I'm telling you, I pray that that same type thing will happen. Yes, some people received that there, there was an instance where the apostles, uh, there were some people who believed and they sent for Peter and John to lay hands on them so that they can receive the Holy Spirit. Got it? But in this case, the Holy Spirit fell on them just like it did at Pentecost. And they knew it because the, the immediate evidence that caused them to know that they got it was they spoke with other tongues. Look here. While Peter was preaching the gospel. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, as I have declared your word through this teaching, you've shown us an example. That people can be filled with the spirit of God while the word is going forth. People, people can believe and then receive the spirit of God, having believed, right while the word goes forth. We just read it in your word. God, I pray that you'll do that. I pray that you do it in all of our churches in the name of Jesus. And those that you don't choose to fill with the spirit by that means, we pray that you will do it by other means. But we thank you that while we're not at a place where we're just laying hands widespread like we did pre-COVID, we thank you huh, that COVID can't keep somebody from receiving the Holy Spirit. Because as the word goes forth, we've seen in your gospel. In your Bible, in the, in, in the Bible, we have seen where people can receive the Holy Spirit while the word goes. Do that, Lord. And while we might not touch them now or like we used to, as we're trying to use wisdom, we know that you want your gifts used. So we believe that you're going to make a way. Make a way for us, those whom you've given to lay hands on people and they be healed. Those who've given, you've given to lay hands and people receive the Holy Spirit, like Peter and John. Make a way for that to happen. But we're so glad, we're so thankful that at times when we don't or can't, that you still fulfill your purposes in Jesus' name. And then, God, we've got everything. We got a lot of things out of that lesson tonight. But help us to be like Jesus. Anoint us afresh with the Holy Spirit and with power so that we, like Jesus, can go about doing good, healing all who are oppressed in any way. Oppressed because of lack of finances. Oppressed in their minds. Oppressed in the soulless realm. Oppressed on their job. Oppressed because of sickness. Do it, Lord, healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we know that you're with us. For you are Emmanuel, God with us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. You'll be with us always, even until the end of this age. Thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Thank you for your pray, patience. I pray that you have received something, even the more. And whatever your assignment is, or whatever, watch this, or whatever you're going through that seems challenging, seems like the enemy may be trying your faith. Watch this. It might seem like uh, people come to you for prayer, come to you for guidance come to you god prepared you for this most importantly he you anointed for this so at any rate at any rate god bless you enjoy the rest of your evening i trust to see some of you this coming sunday in the house of god and to god be the glory good night